everyone with Hughesman coming at you and today doing a tutorial that a ton of people requested and that is getting collision detection within Lens Studio. Now Lens Studio and AR Studio they don't come with physics detection built in so you're gonna have to build that yourself with your own scripts. Luckily that is somewhat straightforward and we're gonna be diving that today in a brand new empty project. I would dive into it here but it's actually pretty complicated and there's some things that don't work in editor so I'm just going to be doing it in a separate empty project and hopefully that should be pretty straightforward to port into your own things. So again comment below if there's anything specific you want to see out of this Space Invaders project. There's a ton and I know there's a ton I need to clean out out of this to actually put it anywhere on, on the web but hopefully I'll be able to get to that at some point. And in the meantime, let me keep on piling through video requests that you guys have uh, before, before that happens. So with that said, let's go ahead, dive into the meat of this video. All right, gone ahead, opened up a fresh project, not even off of any of the templates, and let's go dive into this. So for starters, just gonna go ahead and actually create two just empty, empty cubes. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and just like move things around a little bit just so that they are not colliding with each other and we can kind of see them within the preview. So, all right, should be good enough. And so basic scene setup. Now to dive into the collision detection, I'm actually gonna be using this website as reference. And what we're going to specifically be doing is axes aligned bounding boxes. Now what that means is you have a defined axis, which is usually up, left in, and backwards for your, your axes, and you use that to define your, your cubes. So this basically becomes known as what is called an AABB for short, and allows you to do some really quick checks to actually see if things are inside. So this is intersection with a point, and for the thing we're interested in, which is AABB versus AABB, here is the intersection code. So that should be pretty straightforward. It's basically just checking the mins and maxes of the X, Ys, and Zs to, to make sure that you're actually within the bounding box. So that's a super convenient formula. We'll dive back into that a little later. I should also say that as part of this video, I'm just going to be doing AABB versus AABB, which is exactly what I did for our Space Invaders project. But that said, uh, there are other options such as bounding spheres, uh, spheres versus spheres, and sphere versus AABB. You can add all of these to your own projects, but for today's video, we're just going to be diving into specifically this intersection code. With that said, let's go ahead and just create some scripts for our basic framework. So uh, we'll need two, so I'll go ahead and add those. And let's go ahead and rename this one as ABB. So that is going to be our template that we're gonna assign to anything we want to have uh, detection happen to. And then our second script here, go ahead, call this detection. So that is going to be going through all our AABBs and detecting whether or not any of them are colliding. Uh, same here, and our AB is going to be referencing our mins and max values. So let's go ahead, open up our AABB script. So to start, we're going to need to define a few variables that we'll be editing a, within our inspector. So that is the width, height, and breadth of our actual uh, AB, AABB. And we'll also want a script component to get to our detection script. So that's pretty much all we need here. And that basically helps us set that up. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and define exactly what we need to create an AABB, and that is the mins and maxes. Now, the reason this is defined on script.api is so that other scripts can access these variables. And that's perfect for our detection scripts because they can just go in on a per script basis and get the mins and maxes to compare these intersections. So that's really what we need to, to actually define everything. But of course, we need to set that based on the variables we've defined above. And to do that, we're gonna have to create another function rather that is doing the min and max calculations. The way this is done, and there's a reason this is also on a script API, which I'll get to in a second, is 
first we need to get our center, which is just going to be from our transforms uh, world position. From there, we take our width, height, and breadth, divide that by two, and subtract for the mans, add for the maxes. Now, the reason that this is a script.api, which means it needs to be called from something else, is that this needs to change if we want to, say, move our object in from one frame to another frame. And therefore, our world position changes, and therefore, we need to adapt our detection to accommodate for that. If you wanted, you could do this from an update, but I chose for a little bit more optimization purposes to go ahead and move this function to right before things get uh, actually called so that you don't have to worry about any time timing issues or if you want to even further optimize like when things actually get calculated, you could do that. But for now, that's basically all we need to, to actually create our bounding box and set those variables. Next, there's a reason we brought in the detection, and that is we want to actually go ahead and register our AABB to kind of this manager detection script. And for that, what we're going to need to do is create a register function. Uh, we'll call this right when the, the script initializes, which we'll add at the bottom. And what this is doing is just making sure our detection script is actually there. And if it is, then we need to go ahead and add our AABB Onto, the, uh, onto it. So we tell it, this is myself, the script here, and here's the function that I need to call. So the bottom, all we need to do here is call register, and that's pretty much it. Um, some, some bonus stuff that I added to make my, my life easier when I was going through Space Invaders is I added an intersection function and a callback function. So if you want to assign a callback from something else and you want to get the callback from detection, you can add these two in here and integrate those into collision detection. For our purposes, I'm just actually going to go add a print just to show you that it's working, uh, as opposed to doing this because I don't want to really do anything crazy right now with this other than just printing anything. But just wanted to you know, let you know that this is kind of a framework you can use as well. And yeah, that's A, B, B, done. So great. That's a super awesome. So to, to actually get that set up, let's go ahead, go here, add a script, add A, B, B. Now there's a width, height, and breadth field. We need to set those. We also need to add detection. And let me actually go ahead and create a detection first, just so we have it, have that set up here. Uh, and let me go ahead and rename that detection setup. And now we need to measure our width, height, and breadth. To do that, what I'm going to actually go ahead and do is create an empty child object that's centered at the middle of this queue. And from there, I'm going to zoom in here. What I'm actually going to go ahead and do is just kind of move that a little bit just to, to measure uh, approximately how big this thing is. And again, we're being super approximate here. It's about 7 in the Z. And uh, I'm a little out, about like 7, 7.5. I'm just going to round down to about 7. And then in the height, it's also about 7. So you could do like 7, 7.5, kind of depends. But these are the three values that, again, we're trying to be a little bit approximate to, to measure our x, y, and z's. And because it's just a symmetric, um, we can just double our values. So for the width, Gonna get, if you want to, to do 7.5, we can go 15, height 15, breadth 15. And we also need to go ahead and set our detection script. With that set up, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove that child object. And we can just duplicate the same thing here on our second thing. And I'll speed through this. And the next thing, just to make sure that everything is truly working, is that Detection actually needs to be called and set up before our ABB because uh, if you remember, and we dive back in here, we need to register onto detection, which means detection needs to be ready to go when we register. To, to make that happen is we're actually going to go and hit switch and switch that to a lens turned on. And if we do that, that'll guarantee that it fires after detection, so we won't have to worry about that a little bit later. Now, you'll see that we're getting some errors here, and that's because we haven't defined detection, but let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, in our detection script, and for this, let's start at the top, which is defining our add at AABB function. So 
basically we want a list and we want to add our ABBs onto it. So here's the, the function for that. It's our colliders.push our AABB. So that's basically pushing an array. And so we need to define our colliders array. So that's our colliders array, which is just that variable here. And we can keep adding to it as we register more. Next up, we need to define our intersection function. Now to do that, let's actually go back to our website here. Here's the intersect function. Let's go ahead and copy this. It's not perfect right yet, but we can, we can make that really easily. So here in our intersection function, we have our a dot min, min max and that. Now, if you noticed here, we passed in script, not script.api. So we're actually going to need to, in order to call our min x and min y's and all of that stuff, we need to go ahead and copy our uh, min.api and put that in. So I'm going to go ahead, paste that here, and I'll run through that real fast. Awesome. All right, all the APIs are added in and we need that in order to do our comparisons. So that's set up. And last but not least, we need to just check all of the collisions, which is basically a for loop to one, go through all and update their values and two, to go through all and compare them. So let me go ahead and copy that in. It's kind of a monster function, but you, if you want, you can break that down into two separate things. So for starters here, Going to go ahead, go through everything, and update our min max calculations by just calling that here. Now, I've added in this try catch in case you do deletions or any error checking. Basically, all this does is if it runs into an error, we're just going to remove x out of the array and not have to worry about it. If you don't have any deletions or any errors like that, you can actually go ahead and delete this. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here we go. That's just running through it and calculating everything. Now, the meat of it is this double for loop. So we're gonna go through everything on the first array. And on the second one, we are actually going to go through x plus one and anything beyond that. Why we do that is because if you're comparing things, you don't wanna double compare. So if you compare A and B, you don't, you don't have to compare B and A again. And so for that, basically what we're doing is you have to just compare anything that's in front of you. And if you just kind of draw the comparison diagram, you can see that, that it's always just one plus where you are. So that actually works out really beautifully. And just getting references to those, passing them into intersect. And here are the callbacks that I mentioned before. If you don't want to do that, you can actually just go ahead and do a simple print x and y intersected. Great, that's it. And so that's just all we need to do here. The last thing is just assigning this to update. So here's the code that does that. We just need to assign check collision to it. And boom, that's, that's all we need. It's going to get called an update every frame. This is going to run pretty fast because there are only two objects. If you have hundreds of objects, that could become a problem. But in this case, I'm uh, just going to kind of go through that. You'll see errors have stopped because detection is set up on initialize. We have our meshes here. Just double check 15s and 15. Yeah. Okay, great. Let me just go ahead and save and restart that there. So it's not calling anything. And if we move it now, you can see the log fills up right away. If we uh, pull this out, go ahead and clear nothing and putting it we can see we can see a ton again and yeah that that is it for collisions obviously again if you want you can add much more collisions types onto here this is just a base to get you started this is actually all i needed to actually run through and create space invaders if you want to see any more out of space invaders again leave that as a comment below just so that i can uh figure out what people actually really want to see and uh if you leave a like on that video, that would help us out a ton. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. And thank you all. Again, this, is, this has been a lot of fun creating Space Invaders and seeing everyone playing it and winning. So until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out. Mm -hmm.